Hi, I think I'm live now. It's uh, been a while since I've done this, so I had to figure it out. But uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Never Stop Trucking. Today, I thought maybe uh, we should do some questions and answers. If you have any questions about trucking and dispatching, I can uh, try to answer them for you. If you have any so I'm going to mute myself here and move the chat here. Uh, hi, I'm good. How are you? Uh, it's been a while. I just got back to United States uh, a while ago and uh, I've been busy trying to uh, catch up with everything. So it's uh, it's been fun. But I'm just going to uh, watch the chat here and see what you guys are saying. And then I'm going to uh, switch screens right here. And like I said, if you guys have any questions about uh, dispatching, you can uh, ask me. And then I'll try to answer them right away. And uh, I'll try to talk about... Uh, other things as well connected to dispatching and to trucking. Um, so as you all know, the markets are not that great. Uh, I did a video yesterday uh, about market conditions and uh, everyone was trying to say like, hey, the markets will be better beginning of the year, middle of the year, uh, 2023, uh, end of the year, and now no one really knows. So uh, I guess we just have to uh, hang in there and wait until uh, it all passes. There are many trucks on the road. I was actually uh, this morning with uh, uh, a driver with Mike, and you guys probably met Mike through some of my videos, and... Um, I was looking at all the trailers at this uh, trailer place and there are so many brand new trailers just sitting there and also some used ones as well and uh, last year you couldn't find like they were they were saying uh, they need two years to build trailers <laughs> the orders were backed up that much but now if you go out you can see there are so many uh, trucks and trailers to buy especially trailers uh, because they ordered so many and they're just sitting there now and uh, if you want a trailer you can go and buy one but the thing is they're still expensive they went down a little bit on the prices but they are very expensive, like le expensive like like last year. They were saying like sixty to sixty-five thousand for a dry van, and now maybe you can get one for like sixty, maybe a little bit less. But that's that's it because the parts are still expensive, uh, supposedly, and uh, you know it, it's what it is. But at least you can buy them now, as long as you have work. Uh, so I'm just gonna go through. Uh, uh, chat here now if you guys are new to the channel um, do subscribe uh, t right now we have uh, 26,000 subscribers and that's really a lot and uh, but I think we can do even better uh, we can do way more so if you're here if you're new uh, what we do is uh, I record videos about dispatching and as you, as you can see I have a load board right here and I do a uh, day in the life of a trucking dispatcher. I already have 40 um, videos just about that, just me dispatching trucks and looking for, tr uh, looking for loads. So you can see that I'm real and that I'm actually doing this kind of work. I think I'm the only one that does that. I've seen some videos online about dispatching, but it's mostly owner operators who look for loads for themselves. I don't think there is anyone else doing this uh, so that's what we do and we do other kinds of videos uh, about dispatching about trucking some of them about uh, brokerage uh, I also have a ready to dispatch course that uh, we recorded Emro and I and you guys know Emro so we recorded that uh, dispatching course uh, it used to be way more money at the beginning 
uh, but we slashed the prices. The prices are around 60 to 65 percent less than what they were, and they are still at uh, $300. Uh, but check out the Ready to Dispatch course if you're uh, looking for an organized way of learning. So I'm just going to go through uh, comments a little bit here, and let's make this a relaxed atmosphere. I'm not going to talk about anything in particular. I'm just going to try to chat with you guys and answer some questions if you have any. Uh, so uh, SZ Dispatching, uh, our love from Pakistan, hi. Uh, are brokers not giving loads to uh, mails of dispatch? I heard that broker will work with Kiria Professional Email. Oh, you mean emails. Uh, well, it just depends on the broker if they're going to work with a professional email, like, uh, you know, with your domain name, like uh, szdispatching.com or something like that. Uh, uh, it sure makes you look more professional, but nowadays you really don't know. Um, everyone has always been saying, in, no matter what kind of business you are in, that uh, an email with a professional domain name will uh, make you look more professional and, uh, you know, make you look more serious, more legit. And that's still true, but like nowadays... <laughs> it's really hard to get a load anyway and uh, brokers and everyone else will just look for something out of ordinary uh, to you know validate you uh, there is a, a lot of um, uh, fraud going on right now and we can talk about that uh, I, I made a video about that as well uh, so if you have your own domain name that uh, it's it's like a, it's better for you. You know, it's another red flag that they are crossing. And it's not that expensive. You know, if you go to Google domains or anyone else, it's like $10, $15 for a domain name per year. And then if you go with uh, Google uh, Gmail, the, uh, Google Workspace, it's professional Gmail that you use uh, through Google, but with your own domain name, it's $6 a month. All right. So it's not that expensive. Uh, and it's not that hard to set up. Uh, YouTube is full of videos, you know, how to get a domain name, how to set up your own, uh, your uh, Google Workspace with your domain name. So it does make you look more professional. Uh, uh, and and um, it's uh, there are a lot of spam filters right now, and there is a way to check uh, online whether your email and your domain name passes the spam check. Like how likely is Gmail or other uh, email carriers, how likely is it that they're going to uh, list your uh, email as spam, okay? So if you go with your own domain name, .com, because .com, they like .com, the spam filters, you know, uh, like if you go with dot anything else, there's a, probably a bigger chance that it's going to be marked as spam, all right? So if you go with .com uh, or .net, then you can't, um, you know, you can't go wrong. All right. Uh, six, six, seven rates aren't so great, but uh, the ones I'm seeing a lot more uh, lows this week in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Missouri area. It's just uh, th there are loads out there, but they are not giving us uh, the rates that we want. And usually, when you have a tracking recession or or anything like this. Uh, you would call brokers and the loads will be gone in a matter of seconds. You have to fight. Uh, like if you're not the first one, like if they get hundreds of phone calls at the same time, if you're not the first one, you're not going to get the load. So that's what has always been frustrating. But right now it's different. There are so many tr uh, trucks on the load, on, on the road, and there are uh, many loads available. But the problem is that they're paying cheap. So you know, like the, the brokers will answer. You can get through them. Most of the time you will get through them and they will answer and, you know, you will try to negotiate, but they're not just going to give us the rates. That's that's the biggest problem right now. And I see, I saw this morning, I had a guy in Indiana. Th there are loads being posted. There are loads. So I'm, I'm hoping that uh, since we are not taking, like, they don't get hundreds of phone calls and not everyone is trying to undercut each other, I'm hoping that slowly 
the the rates will go up. So that that's what I hope for. And then you're right. There are some. There are more loads uh, on there. Uh, did you hear Warner's vice president's press uh, conference? Uh, not if that's something recent. I haven't. Uh, I did make a video the other day about uh, uh, Warner's, uh, I think, CEO that, you know, he said that uh, a lot of uh, trucking carriers uh, are not going out of business uh, because such and such, like it's all speculation. So I didn't make a video about that, but I didn't. I've heard this morning something about Prime. Uh, I don't think it's anything official, but I've heard that uh, Prime is having problems and, and it's it's. With big carriers, it's, uh, uh, you know, all these big carriers, they were uh, uh, predicting that uh, small uh, trucking companies are going to go out of business because they don't have the contract uh, rates, uh, they can't make it. It's usually the, the small carriers that go uh, out of business first. But this time, I think it's going to be the, the other way around, because uh, right now the contracted rates are expiring, uh, you know, from these uh, big carriers. And uh, they were OK until now, like uh, last year and, and uh, some some uh, of this year. Uh, but right, right now, their contact, contract rates are expiring. And right now they are in trouble because they have to renew them and they're not going to get the same rates. They have a lot of overhead uh, these big companies. So I'm thinking that uh, most likely, and the, the system is designed to work in their favor. It always has been, and we all know that uh, government and other agencies, they uh, were, they preferred the big carriers because they can easier control them and because they, they usually go by rules, you know, like the, the safety and, you know, dr driver um, you know, treatment of drivers and all that, and they can uh, go with big accounts. Uh, but I think I think that's not that's not what's going to happen. I think the bigger carriers are now in 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 bigger trouble. You know, because our small us small carriers, uh, we can go m uh, months without any any profit, without any uh, any pay. You know, if I have to, if I have my own trucks and they're not making any money, I can always find a side job or, or do something else and then just kind of like maintain what I have. These big carriers, they cannot do that, all right? So let's go to next one. Uh, Imran Wayne, what should I do? Find a new truck. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's hard. Like uh, I made a, a video the other day about like finding new trucks and how to convince carriers to work with you. Just tell them that you're a one man operation and most likely they, they will um, owner operators will uh, likely work with someone uh, that's like a one man operation that, you know, does their own uh, calling, advertising and dispatching. Because if, if someone like like even today I can show on my phone. I received already, and it's uh, almost noon here uh, in Michigan, I received at least six or seven phone calls from dispatchers advertising their services. And it's all of them, it's like uh, like uh, someone in, in their department, like for the sales only. It's not an actual dispatcher that, that's going to actually look for a load. So, you know, people don't want to work with those kind of people, you know, they want to work with someone, you know, that's real. So you maybe you should emphasize that, say, hey, I am the dispatcher, I will work with you, uh, I will find your loads, try me out, and just tell me what you need, all right? Uh, next one, next question, if we have one. Uh, S. Uh, Heppard, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not just, I'm just not going to try to pronounce names because uh, I don't want to make any mistakes. Uh, is it a good idea to create and sell a transportation management software? You know, right now, I, <laughs> uh, the, I, I don't think so, all right? I'm just going to tell you that right now. I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, I have seen uh, a lot of new TMS softwares lately. And a lot of people, because it's getting easier to create um, programs and software right now. Uh, it, like it used to be a lot of coding. It's still, there is still coding involved. There is still, you still need to know what you're doing. But with AI, 
and uh, uh, the program uh, building softwares, you know, where it, sometimes it's just drag and drop. Uh, it's getting easier to, to make uh, programs, to make software. Uh, and therefore, I'm seeing a lot of new TMS softwares. They're just popping out of everywhere. A lot of dispatching softwares, uh, tracking management softwares, um, brokerage, other things. And I'm getting a lot of emails as well and offers and telling, hey, well, I have this TMS. Uh, can you make a video about it? And for sure, I will make a video if I think it's, uh, it's going to help. Uh, dispatchers or tracking companies that's not a problem but the problem is like most of them are really same most of them are not giving any new like uh, a value it's like i can get all that in in another program there is nothing revolutionary that's going to change the industry that's going to change the system it's like ah you know like another tms so my advice if you really if you have something that's out of ordinary that's going to change the industry uh, that's going to be a big uh, boom or big hit then yeah go go ahead and try it uh, but if you if you have a regular tms you know something that mo others have uh, then unless you have a extraordinary uh, marketing um, qualities and capabilities uh, or or um, if you have a, a large audience or large email list, something like that, then yeah, maybe you can try it. But uh, if you don't, then um, maybe you should try to come up with something else that will uh, help the trucking industry, okay? Uh, next one. Uh, hold on, hold on, I'm just trying because there is a lot of questions, man. <laughs> and then if, if if I'm not able to answer these, I'll try to go live soon again and because and uh, I just don't want this to take a long time, all right? Um, maybe an hour tops. All right, uh, I dispatch cars and I want to grow. I need to start my own dispatching, but I also get loads, but pass it uh, on to a broker friend. So I don't know if I should do a brokerage and a dispatching together but might get the conflict of interest problem. That's, I like that question. That, that's a really uh, good way of thinking. Brokerage uh, is way better than dispatching. I'm gonna tell you that right now. It's, it's way more secure. Uh, you will have a, a lot more opportunities and you, you will be able to make um, way more money provided that the markets are, are good, that the markets uh, get better and they will get better. We just have to wait uh, so um, I would I would do both, uh, try to avoid the conflict of interest in the beginning and see if that brokerage works for you. If the brokerage works for you, I would, con I would concentrate on that. You, like, down the road, I wouldn't want any problems, but in the beginning, nothing is preventing you to try to do both. Uh, brokerage, uh, you can work directly with shippers. You know, as, as a dispatcher, you can't. Uh, you can't work directly with shippers, uh, and uh, with the, as a broker, you will come out as as more serious and professional to your customers, to drivers, to carriers, uh, and like I said, you can make make uh, uh, way more money. And if you already have contacts, if you already have some carriers, and if you uh, have uh, you know companies uh, that are that you're already working with that you know that are uh, uh, shipping cars, uh, vehicles, then yeah, go for it. And and getting a brokerage license is not that hard. Uh, it's same as trucking, uh, $300 for a uh, MC number. And uh, if you have a good credit score, if you don't, uh, for your uh, bond, for security bond, it will be anywhere from like 1000 to like $3,000 a year. Okay, for the security bond, uh, for liability insurance, it's maybe like thousand dollars a year, and that's about it that you need and an LLC, of course. Uh, so it's not that much money uh, to to invest in if you already have contacts and, and if you know what you're doing. So I would go with brokerage definitely. Okay, 
separate. Well, you know, if you if you separate both entities, you, you can, like I said, th there is no problem if you have two have different entities. Just make sure uh, if you can, if you're going to do dispatch and brokerage, uh, if you can uh, do a different uh, address. All right, th that that would help. Uh, insurance companies don't like. Uh, uh, especially if you have a, a carrier authority and brokerage authority, uh, they don't like uh, them uh, working from the same address. All right, so it's just and I, but I've seen uh, I've seen that I've seen uh, carriers uh, having brokerage authority from the same address, and they work. But whenever I try to contact my insurance and ask them about that, uh, two of them told me that uh, it's better to have a different uh, location. All right. In your opinion, uh, why would someone not, not want to use dispatching service? I'm talking about a load posting that says no dispatch service. My business partner came across that the other day. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty common that uh, some brokers will not work with dispatching services. I'm sorry, I, my, my mouth is getting dry. <clears throat> it could be um, due to a number of reasons. The other day... Um, we were uh, doing a dispatching packet, and it wasn't me. It was a, a dispatcher that's working from overseas. And uh, a broker said, no, we cannot do a, uh, do loads with you. Why? Well, your IP address is not from United States. And they're, they are uh, doing that. And even uh, if you're using VPN, I think uh, uh, they are also, um, uh, they can uh, detect whether you're uh, using VPN, all right? So it doesn't matter if you have a US uh, IP address uh, with VPN. Uh, if they want to, they can still find you and f uh, red flag you. Uh, and then also there's a new system called Highway, and I want to make a video about that system. Uh, but that uh, new system, Highway, a lot of uh, more brokers are requiring uh, carriers to uh, get registered on Highway. And that one is also, I guess, uh, trying to prevent fraud. So if they see that you're uh, from uh, overseas, then uh, they can um, blacklist you, uh, red flag you, and they don't want to work with you. And some brokers don't want to work with uh, someone that's from overseas. Even DAT load board, uh, they will uh, give you a dispatch account for a load board. And and uh, I'm, I'm seeing more and more people are complaining that DAT is um, refusing them due to a number of reasons. I don't know. I'm not uh, associated with DAT. I don't know. It's, it's their internal rules. Uh, but uh, they sent us an email because I'm an affiliate and, and they said that uh, dispatchers now have to call the AT board and get registered instead of uh, getting um, a new account online. Now they have to call and I think they, are, they have a number of steps uh, where they are going to, I'm just going to maybe increase here because I'm not talking. There we go. Because they are, uh, seeing more fraud as well, and they want to prevent that. So uh, there's a lot of things that they are uh, trying to do, and it's getting harder for dispatchers to get signed up uh, with DAT boards. So even them, they're they're doing that, and a lot of brokers are seeing a lot of fraud, and they're seeing a lot of fraud coming from overseas, and um, most of the dispatching companies are located overseas even though even though some of them are saying that they are not because like they they have to have an llc here uh, they have an address here in the united states they have an llc and when they call me i ask them that i ask them like where are you from they're like oh yeah we're from texas well i i know you're not and i know you have to say it but maybe it would be more honest like when you talk to carriers to tell them hey i'm actually located someplace else but our llc is here so, because most drivers are now, you know, like they know the game uh, and dispatchers are trying to prevent fraud and a lot of them will not work uh, with the dispatching company. But let me tell you something, uh, a broker really does not need to know that because you're not uh, obligated to tell them, hey, I'm a dispatching service. Like when you're calling for a load uh, for a certain carrier and they're asking for the MC number, you just tell them, hey, the MC number is uh, such and such and that's it okay because you you have a signed uh, uh, agreement 
or contract with the carrier, you have, a, I'm assuming, a power of attorney where you can book loads and call and inquire about the loads in their name. So they don't even know, need to know that you're a dispatching service. Most of them will not even ask you. Like if they ask you, hey, are you a dispatching service? Then, you know, uh, you, like it's up to you whether like, you know, I would be honest and tell them, hey, I am, you know, but I'm, I have a signed contract. I can do this. You can call the carrier and ask them. Uh, but most of the brokers will not even uh, ask you whether you're a dispatcher or not, okay? So, you know, like I said, it's uh, really up to you. Uh, next question. I'm having trouble with Nolan and the third cost logistics to uh, detach my MC account. What do you recommend or do you know something about that? Uh, if you can give me more details about that, like, uh, do you, uh, is that your own authority or you, are you working with someone else? And what do you mean uh, de by detaching your MC account? So if you can uh, clarify that question a little bit, because I really don't uh, understand. Uh, sir, which load board is the best for you uh, to use at this situation for the cargo and <laughs> Uh, for the cargo van, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you know, Silectus uh, is is the most popular load board for cargo van, but it's hard to um, get accepted, uh, especially if you're a dispatcher, because they uh, usually only work with uh, MC numbers uh, with carriers, and usually a carrier would sign up with their MC number, and you have to use that MC number in order to use their load board. If, I, if I'm if missing something, if I don't know, if, if there's a trick, uh, let me know, you know, about, you know, if you're a dispatching agency and you're able to somehow, uh, maybe, you know, if you sign up uh, or use someone else's account uh, from an owner operator and then call that uh, broker directly uh, in Sil uh, Selectus and ask them, but I think they still have, have to, uh, an account set up there. So that's the best way to go. Uh, DAT board and truck stop, they only have so many loads for uh, sprinter vans. And, uh, you know, like the other day, <laughs> I was looking at ads uh, on Indeed.com and they were advertising um, ads for owner operators for sprinter vans. And they're advertising 80 cents to uh, 120 per mile. For sprinter van for owner operators that's just ridiculous you know who's gonna make money that way no one so it it's like it's tough i i don't know i i don't work with sprinter vans so i couldn't tell you hey i just swung by uh, to say hi and that what you do is very inspiring keep it up brate thank you uh i try my best uh to help everyone uh, when I have time, so like like today, but I appreciate the uh, the comment. Uh, I had someone offer us a dollar per mile for a box truck. It's bad. Yes, yes, I know. It, it, like five hundred, let's say five hundred miles for five hundred dollars. Like you're just gonna be negative. That, that that's not gonna work. And it does happen. You know, even like eighty cents per mile, eighty cents per mile. Jivim down the road from you next to Arapol. <laughs> okay, so he's here in the... In, uh, hey, how are you? Uh, he's right here in the same city, so that's cool. Uh, Davor, what do you think about dispatching from Serbia, Bosnia? You know, someone that makes for a living by dispatching trucks in USA. Thanks for answering in advance. Yes, I know many people that work from Serbia, especially from Bosnia. I know many people. I actually spoke... I mean, I know, like, I work with some of them, uh, but I actually speak with a lot of uh, dispatchers uh, from there, uh, and they do it, you know, some of them, because there, there are a few things you can do. Uh, some, some of these companies have offices in Bosnia. I, I'm pretty sure in Serbia, too, uh, but I know for sure in Bosnia, there is, like, in, in every bigger city, there is an office uh, uh, for a trucking company that's here in the United States. So what they do is they have their own trucks and they form an office and you only dispatch their trucks. So you work for them uh, for, you know, usually a salary. So Excuse me. So you work for them, but they're also dispatching offices that work, uh, you know, like as an independent agency that work with multiple MC numbers. So I know for sure that there is that too. 
And I also know that there are a lot of dispatchers that are not doing just uh, uh, dispatching or looking for loads. Uh, they could be doing paperwork, invoices. Uh, they could be doing after hours, like check-in calls. There's a lot of uh, dispatchers that work in auto industry and uh, some of them just do check calls. Uh, some of them are just there like for emergency phone calls. So there's a lot of possibilities. You just have to uh, find it. And I know it's very hard. Lately, uh, they all, you know, they only want experienced dispatchers because they don't have time or resources to train new dispatchers. So if you can, you know, work, find a, a local uh, office agency, just walk in and, and ask them, hey, you know, can you train me? Can I just look and then I'll, I'll work for you or... Uh, I know it's tough, you know, right now to find some, but there definitely there are many, many, uh, not just in Bosnia and Serbia, in Eastern Europe, uh, in, in Asia. I know there's a lot of companies that do that, all right? Um, having been in the industry for so long, is this the worst truck re recession you have experienced? And how long have previous recessions lasted? Uh... It's, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say it's the worst, but for sure it's the, it's the most interesting one and it's the, the weirdest one so far. Um, usually, as I've said before, uh, there, there would be um, no loads on the load, load boards. Uh, you would be fighting to uh, just even talk to a broker. And when they answer, like, you have no time, even to talk you're just like yeah, i'll take it i'll take it that's no negotiating no uh, but then uh, if we have a recession usually the fuel prices would go down uh, insurance rates would be okay uh, maintenance would be normal uh, because they don't have any work and they're not going to uh, um, you know, go up on their prices. But right now, it's different. I'm sorry, I'm having allergies. Right now, it's different. The fuel is going up, insurance is going up, maintenance is going up, everything is going up, and they're busy. They have work. And you can't be like, hey, well, you know, you shouldn't charge me that much. Uh, look at the recession. No, it's it's not. And, and also another thing, um, we would have... Uh, uh, like if you go to other uh, types of businesses uh, in other industries, you will notice that they are also uh, slow. They don't have any work. Uh, they are not hiring anyone. They are laying people off. But right now it's the opposite. You know, there is work. Uh, the, the prices are going up. Everything is going up. But our in our industry, everything is going down. So th if you look at it that way, then, yeah, it is uh, the worst one uh, uh, so far. And um, what they say, uh, like I was just listening on radio the other day, uh, the economists are saying, like like general economy, uh, that we are in recession, all right, because the, the, uh, the rates, the interest rates are going up and, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, and they're saying that, yes, we are probably in recession right now. But the thing is that uh, other uh, industries are not feeling it as much as, as we are. And they're saying that usually a uh, recession would last for one year. Okay, so one year, one year. And then after that, it would need like uh, uh, another six months uh, for every, everything to, to recover. So it will take after a, a re recession because uh, they're saying like it's normal in 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 United States in this economy it's always normal to have a recession every uh, few years and and economists know that it's coming and they're always counting on it and they're always saying it it takes one year for the uh, recession to uh, you know uh, uh, finish and then it will take another six months to uh, recover so that's as far as the normal economy goes as far as trucking goes it always has been like that. Uh, mostly, you know, one year of bad times and then run on another six months of stagnation, you know, you, you like you hit uh, at the bottom and then it slowly uh, goes up. And then one day, like, it's like, oh, you know, it's going up. And everyone was, oh, okay, let's buy some more trucks. Let's buy new trailers. Uh, let's get more accounts. Now we're hiring. Uh, let's spend all this money. 
And then after a couple of years, then goes down. Like, and everyone's like, hey, what's going on? Like, what? well, what just happened? Well, you know, it, it was going to happen. You know, like you, uh, the trucking companies are not planning strategically. They're not uh, expanding strategically. Like, hey, I'm going to, uh, you know, in next two years, I'm going to have uh, this more, this more, this much trucks, this many trucks, this many trees. They, they are basing uh, their uh, expansion based of, on, on the markets, on the volume of floats, on on the the payments or like the raise they can get. So whenever they see good times, like they order 20 trucks. Oh, yeah, I'm going to make that money. It, it, that's the biggest mistake. And then when we have the recession, when the, the markets go down, uh, then those 20 trucks are just going to be sitting you're not going to be able to find drivers maybe for like five of them then you're going to try to sell the other ones and you're going to be complaining so that that's the way it works so i'm thinking short answer is uh because like i was talking to emro the other day uh last year in in uh, june july august we were all worried like oh look at this the the uh, rates are going down what are we going to do but now, if you look at those rates from one year ago and the volume of the lows that we had, I mean, I would be very happy to have that right now. Uh, but at, at the same time, this year, we were very uh, worried. So uh, this whole thing started uh, around, uh, uh, I would say, February, March of last year. And uh, if you go by, by what I just said, like another year, it's going to be a year in February or March of 2024. And, you know, it will take another six months. So, like I said, I don't want to, it's not really cool to give any, um, like, to do a prognosis on, on that. Because uh, we did it before and it, it wasn't, it wasn't correct. You know, we were just predicting. But if you go by that, then maybe like <laughs> mid next year. So you know sorry uh next one here uh come on come on oh, there are so many questions i think i'm going to have to leave some of them for next time but let's go to the next one uh truck truck industry is almost dead don't buy a truck until 2025 yeah i would i would maybe let's say like 2024 sometime 2024 but yeah, 2025, yeah, it's, uh, we'll see, you know, because we have elections next year, uh, end of ne uh, next year. So hopefully by that time, we will know more what's going on. And it's always like when we have election, there is always something like this going on. But it just started earlier uh, this time. Uh, I love your, uh, your channel. You're doing the best. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, do I need how much how much money do I need for starting my own company uh, I'm thinking dispatching company I did make a video the other day look for that on the on the channel it's just a recent video like how to start dispatching on a budget so if you if you go that way you're gonna need like a couple of hundred bucks maybe but if you go the traditional way maybe like 500 bucks you know unless you don't even have a computer or anything like that uh, you, you don't have any equipment then it's gonna be more but for your permits and and everything else uh at most at most five hundred dollars if you want to do on budget it's doable you can do it under two hundred dollars uh if you don't already have a truck the best thing to do is a company driver until things are back to nor uh, normal especially pricing of trucks yes definitely uh you, right now you can well, it depends what you're doing. If you're owner operator and you have, you have some kind of special equipment or you have some good accounts, especially if it's a reefer or flatbed or something like that, or even on, on in a van, if you're a runner, I'm, you can still make money. You, you can still um, make some okay money to survive. But if you're not, like if you don't like the headaches, you don't want to worry about anything, yes, as a company driver, at least you have some steady income. Um, or... Or even as a local local company driver, with the overtime, uh, they, they can make a lot of money too. All right. Uh, what do you think of bigger companies that have an after-hours team that traces the trucks? Is that really necessary? I mean, all the work could be done uh, by the dispatch team only. Well, big companies, yes, they uh, they definitely 
uh, need that. Th dispatchers could do it, but then, you know, they are not specialized to do that. Like it in interrupts your work. Uh, it uh, it makes you less productive. Like if in in perfect world, if if I had a lot of trucks, let's say I I have a hundred trucks, it would make more sense. Uh, to have same number of people, like let's say you have 100 trucks and you need like 10, 15 dispatchers to cover all those, okay, 10 to 15. Uh, it would be better to have a small amount of dispatchers uh, that will do dispatching only and some uh, support uh, like uh, dispatching drivers, like just sending them, uh, like doing, like let's, let's say you have someone just doing the packets, you you have a person that only does packets, that only uh, dispatches drivers, and that only uh, tracks them. That would mean so much because this way the dispatcher can concentrate on dispatching and, and they know what their jobs and they can do it more effectively. And that's why they do it, all right? I'm pretty sure bigger companies, uh, if, they, if they had someone come from the outside uh, and analyze what they're doing, Let's say, you know, like, let's say you're, you have been in the industry for 20 years or 10 years and you, you know everything about trucking and you go into a trucking company and they let you go through the paperwork, to their, through their expenses. You go around, you take it, take like uh, seven days to analyze everything. I bet you could save a lot of money uh, to them telling them, hey, you don't really need this many people. You could do this better. They just don't see it. All right. So there is always room for improvement. But sometimes it's due to management uh, or, or like, you know, you, you have a friend or, or like family that you want to hire. So there is a lot of that going on. But I, you're right. Uh, you don't need that many people. You can always do uh, same uh, kind of work with smaller amount of people. You pay them better. All right. You pay them better for, for that work. Uh, and at the end, you will. Uh, save money and that's that's what I'm always uh, saying but you know who listens to me <laughs> okay hello uh, uh, ha noon has such videos thanks for all the information uh, I I don't know who is uh, oh no one no one oh yeah sorry uh, no one has such videos thanks thank you very much for for the uh, kind comments thank you I appreciate that is it possible for me to get a five minute call with you? Uh, send me an email, uh, Ennis, at, uh, I'll just put it here, my email, like if you guys need anything. And I cannot promise that I will answer right away. It might take me a while uh, because that's like, I don't monitor this all the time, uh, this email. So when I log in, then I, I try to answer everything at the same time. So uh, just email me. Uh, that's uh, for uh, the person who said, is it possible for me to get a five minute call? Uh, next one, sometimes I find rates per mile less than $1 on the loaders. Why does this occur? Uh, well, they see probably a lot of trucks in that area uh, or it's a traditionally uh, an area that uh, pays less. Like for example, if you're going out of East Coast, traditionally to go to East Coast, you get better pay and out of East Coast, uh, you get smaller pay. Uh, so if it's one of those areas, uh, then yeah. Uh, and and there are a lot of uh, companies looking for a backhaul. For example, uh, like us, we're in Michigan, and uh, I'm, and uh, we sometimes go to East or Ohio and come back. Sorry, I had to sneeze, so I turned it off. <laughs> uh, traditionally. Uh, if you need a backhaul from Ohio to Michigan, uh, you can sometimes manage to uh, with getting a cheaper load, and uh, brokers will know that they they know where you're from, and then they're just gonna post that as it is and hope that someone needing a backhaul uh, will take that load. Okay, so it happens for a number of reasons. It's a good question. Sorry, allergies just in time and I didn't have anything before I started so right now yes uh, I have a computer and phone I live in Asia can I work from overseas as a dispatcher 
and can I use code for 30 days free, sign up DAT load board, and which level would be at least good for uh, to speak to broker? Uh, the mid level for DAT board, I think it's uh, it's about $180 uh, per month, and I think there is a lower one for like 130 but I'm not sure. I think the one that's 180 uh, will have will um, you will be able to post multiple trucks at the same time with that one. That's around 180 dollars right now. It used to be called DAT Power. I think it's like DAT One now or something like that. Uh, and if you're in Asia, yes, you can definitely work from there. But DAT Board is. Uh, uh, like I said before, uh, they're more strict now. So you will have to have a, a company registered here in the United States. Usually it's an LLC and they will check it out. They will see where it is, you know, uh, e the EIN number. So they're, they're strict. You, I would call them first and ask them what, what they need. All right. And then, yes, you can use that code um, f to get the, the 30 days free. But you have to, uh, the code is in the description of this video, okay? So you have to give them that code, all right? I'm sorry, I'll be right back. Uh, my allergies are killing me. Just give me two minutes, okay? Okay, I'm back. Hopefully you can hear me. Sorry about that. Um, next one, because some brokers are drunk on the job. Okay, <laughs> I know what in in what reference in what reference that was, but uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me see. Next one. Uh, come on. One of my dispatchers was inquiring for an Ohio to Michigan load for a box truck. Uh, the broker from Landstar has covered the 200 mile load for $300. Uh, there will always be carriers who take cheap, cheap loads. Yeah, as, a, as I said, sometimes, you know, the, someone has to do a backhaul or, or they have to be home for uh, s some reason or they want to just uh, move to a better area. Because like if you go to East Coast, you know you're going there for good uh, money. Or, or if you're going to Florida, for example, or if you're going to Denver, Colorado, you know you're usually going there for good money. And uh, sometimes people will just take cheap loads just to get out of that bad area and move to the better area because they're not gonna get the rate that, that they want anyway. Uh, so better than go empty, just go from like Florida to like uh, Atlanta, Georgia or something or, or from uh, Pennsylvania to Ohio and then hopefully next day you can get a better load uh, from there and, and brokers and shippers, they know that and that's why sometimes you, you just have to do it. You don't have uh, a choice. Uh, hi, what to do with brokers uh, shipper when the shipper refuses to put in and out times on the bill of lading for detention pay? What to do? Well, uh, you didn't hear this from me, but uh, if the disp if the uh, driver puts it on it, you know, because uh, usually brokers will not ask like, "Hey, did did the driver write down these times or the the shipper?" Okay, so is it okay? I don't know, but most people will do it because you didn't lie. Like you, like on your e-logs, they have those times and they can prove that they were there. The the shipper didn't want to do it for some reason, and they do sometimes refuse. So sometimes a driver will do it, okay? And it's not you're not lying because you know you're you're just trying to get your money. So okay, uh, is paid the trucking school uh, a scam or even worth it? So. Uh, if you're talking about trucking school, like that's gonna uh, teach you how to drive, then no, it's not a scam. If if that's what you mean, because like me myself, when I got my CDL, my brother was already driving, and here in Michigan, uh, anyone can train you e uh, dri to drive a car or even a semi truck, which is crazy. In most countries, you can't do that. Uh, so I drove with my driver. I got my. Uh, uh, 
permit like you do a, a written test you pass that and then you get a temporary license and then you have to be uh, able to drive with someone and that someone will teach you and I, I drove with my brother and he, uh, he taught me and then I just went uh, to pass the uh, driving test and that's it but most people don't have a privilege they don't know anyone that's driving so that therefore they have to go with a trucking school that will teach them how to drive so you have to if that's what you meant um, should I stop trying to dispatch for box truck and work with hot shots and semi only I won't even work with hot shots semis only just nice short and clear box truck it's hard to find loads for box trucks it's hard to f find load for hot shot it's hard to find loads for cargo vents and I'm sorry I know uh, a lot of drivers are in those trucks trying struggling to find loads and then a lot of them will pay a dispatcher uh, like even like 10 percent or more just to find them loads but there are no loads that's the problem you're you're promising something that you cannot fulfill and you're going to find them a load that pays dollar a mile and and you know no, no one is going to win so i would advise to 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 uh, concentrate uh on, on semi trucks Uh, Chris, what's up? Not much, Chris. Uh, <laughs> Anis, what software do you use for collecting data? Collecting data, uh, I, can you rephrase that? Like, what, what kind of data are, are we talking about? So, okay, next one. Uh, pozdrav is Pancho. Pozdrav, greetings. Uh, how do I understand if I'm booking the load for a good rate or a bad rate, depending on the zone where the truck is? Oh, that's that's uh, uh, that question requires uh, a longer answer and a video for itself. Uh, zones, good loads. I'll make a note. I do have a couple of videos. Just look on my on my channel about uh, for that about uh, like um, how to. Uh, I'll tr <laughs> there is one where, where I s stand in the front of a map an actual map physical map on the wall uh, and i try to explain uh, uh zones there is another one too there are t at least two videos just look for uh, on the channel for, for those videos uh, that i where i speak about zones and differences and, and and the load rates and all that okay uh how do i get dtx as being a foreigner i just uh, spoke about that so hopefully uh, you got if not uh, you can re-watch this video and i spoke a couple of times in this video about that uh, mio drug uh, sometimes drivers are expecting some paid loads from <laughs> uh, uh, areas like loads were paid yeah drivers uh, will expect you're right from uh, if they're in bad area they will expect great loads and it's uh, <laughs> your job to explain to them that it that's not how it works uh they can say like hey you know like uh, last month i got a, a good uh, load from that area or or a friend of mine well it it like you don't know the circumstances like why it happened when did it happen did the broker really or the shipper really need someone to cover that load like someone canceled an appointment you know driver was late something happened why why you might get a, a great rate out of a bad area and it does happen occasionally but usually uh, it doesn't and usually the drivers have before even uh, before they even get there uh, maybe you should explain to them and they have to be aware of the fact that they're not going to get a good load from that area okay you have to tell them like don't just tell them hey you're not going to get a good load you j give them numbers tell them hey uh, from there if you want to go uh back to where you were you're gonna get this much money and it's gonna be heavy just so you know um so they're aware of that okay uh i will see registered and call dat but still no response yeah i i understand it's 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 on them you know and i i still wonder like truck stop uh, it has been their rule for a long time with truck stop that they will not uh, give you access to a truck stop load board unless you have uh, your own MC number. And I'm, I was very surprised when I learned that DAT board actually allowed that. Uh, that was a while ago. Um, but uh, they are changing their rules. 
and I think pretty soon that uh, they're going to be even more strict because I, really there's a lot of fraud going on. I'm getting daily emails from brokers, from trucking companies that someone is using their number, their MC number, uh, someone hi hijacked their DAT account. Happens a lot. So they're just trying to make sure that uh, it's all legit and uh, sometimes uh, for no reason they will uh, not allow legit companies and legit people, good people, access to, to their board uh, because of these uh, bad apples. So it, it, it's what it is, you know, it's DAT, I can't change that. Uh, Mia Drag saying, uh, whenever a new driver came to me, I'm a dispatcher by the way, and says, listen, I need money, <laughs> he never made it. Uh, whenever you have a new truck driver, like uh, expecting a lot and asking you like how much money can you make me, then you know that it's going to be hard to work with them because usually they don't understand uh, the zones, the industry, the way the rates work, uh, the way the markets work. And, and it was uh, tough for me to understand that as well. Uh, it still is, but like brokers and shippers don't care about your profits, about uh, carrier's profits, about brokers. Well, care, like shippers don't care about brokers' profits either. Uh, the only thing they care about is, is themselves. Uh, they're shipping uh, thousands and thousands of uh, dollars worth of product and they want to pay you dollar a mile, okay? Uh, they want because they they have so much volume. They're 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 uh, saving every dollar that they can. They're uh, they're looking at the markets. They're looking at the markets at, at the statistics more than you and I and even the brokers. And they are the ones determining these prices. All right. And they're saying like, you, let's just slash these prices. We're going to give uh, this load to five brokers. Let them compete between each other and try to find a carrier that's going to uh, do this load for the cheapest rate available. They don't care if the f fuel rates are going up. They don't care if you're going to make money, if you're gonna, going to be profitable or if you're going to have to shut down your company. Uh, they don't care if you're going to be able to pay the driver, to pay for the insurance, the maintenance. Uh, all they care is those numbers, uh, 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 the markets, and like, okay, well, the average rates right now are $2 or $1.80 per mile, and that's what we're paying. That's it. You know, I don't care if you need uh, $3 per mile to be profitable. That, that it, it's not how it works. And most drivers, most owner operators do not understand this. They complain how the fuel prices are going up, um, how the maintenance prices are going up. Uh, they, they, they don't want to pay you like, like you tell them I charge 6% from the load. And they tell you, well, you know, I can pay you three or four. They try to negotiate like they want to save all that money. And I understand that. I don't blame them. I would maybe do probably do the same thing. But they don't understand that uh, uh, it's it's the way it is right now, and it's like take it or leave it. You know, it, if you want to work, you're just gonna have to, you know, drive like that, being paid with that kind of money. Uh, if not, you can wait till this passes, and then hopefully uh, we can make some uh, more money next year or so. But it's not the way it works. They don't care about our profits. It's just, it's what it is. <clears throat> uh, what's the best, uh, okay, so I'm gonna, so I have uh, three more questions here. I'm gonna try to answer those. So uh, I can, uh, like, I can do this uh, more often if you guys want to, but uh, I really have to go uh, too. So I'm gonna try to concentrate on these. Uh, hold on, there's more than three. <laughs> A uh, question for dispatchers overseas, how c uh, can you get Curious set up with RMIS, uh, use VPN and switch to the US? Yeah, uh, try to use v VPN. There are a lot of them. Most of them are good. Uh, what's the name of VPN? I use ExpressVPN. They're a little bit more expensive than the other ones, but they're really legit. They're one of the best ones. Uh, I also had a, like a promotion code, but <laughs> I don't know where it is right now, but I use ExpressVPN. Uh, and uh, you said you don't you don't use DAT. Uh, 
I'm just wondering what other loads boards do you use for finding freight? What software will you? No, I use DAT board. You know, if you're a dispatcher and uh, you have been using DAT board so far, then you're most likely okay. They're not going to go after you. It's only the new uh, dispatching companies and new dispatchers that are signing up and try to get a new account uh, that they are giving trouble. Okay, if you're an established one and you're already there, uh, then you're, you're fine. <coughs> Okay, next one. Uh, what is the best way to find first few drivers at the beginning of dispatcher? I have maybe three to five videos on the channel uh, uh, about it because that's that's really uh, a big topic. All right, so just look for my channel uh, for those videos. Um, Ibrahim Musa, I have a custom one on Oracle server. There are some guides here how to do it. Okay, where can I find semi trucks? Will I have to just keep calling the MC numbers? Yes, that's, and uh, like I said, I have uh, some videos on the channel. Just look for these videos. Uh, type in owner operator in the search bar. Go to my channel, uh, like to, to the homepage of the channel. And on the right hand side, in the uh, upper right corner, there's a small search button. Not the search button for YouTube videos, but on my channel that will only uh, look uh, through videos on my channel, okay? Uh, uh, just type in owner operator, okay? And uh, where can I find semi trucks? Will I? Yes, that's that's what it is. And then uh, ready to dispatch course. Uh, if you guys are interested, um, if you 15% uh, off, use uh, a, a code at the checkout. I'll put it in here. Uh, dispatch uh, dispatcher 15. I think it's either dispatcher or dispatching um, 15 if not just uh, email me email me I'll give you the code 15% off from the dispatching also uh, go to uh, download section there's a lot of uh, downloads here uh, uh, carrier contacts uh, dispatcher templates there's some uh, uh, free things as well uh, trip reports uh, BOLs things like that uh, and that's about it. Thanks for watching. And it would really mean to, uh, much to me if you guys would share uh, some of my videos uh, on your social networks. Uh, like as many as you can. Uh, what hap what uh, helps the algorithm is if you watch the video till the end. And then start watching the next video as well. If you like the video, if you comment, if you share it. Uh, so that will spread the word. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, one more time for everything, uh, for the support and for the nice words that I have been getting on this channel. Uh, and uh, I'm trying, uh, like I know other uh, people on YouTube, uh, it's all about entertainment and laughing and, you know, but with me, uh, my uh, approach is different. I, I'm trying to stay serious and take this job seriously. Sometimes I come out as harsh, maybe. But uh, I am trying to help everyone uh, to, to work from home, maybe do it overseas. And if you have any questions about tracking, I'm open. I will tell you uh, everything I know about tracking and uh, uh, dispatching. Thanks, guys. See you later.